Hello and welcome to Good Life, the health show with me, Pooja. Well, this is a show that focuses on providing you with solutions to your health-related issues, lifestyle and much more. Well, viewers, uh, congenital heart defects are conditions that are present at birth and can affect the structure of a baby's heart and the way it works. Well, they are the most common type of birth defect and as medical care and treatments have advanced, infants with congenital heart defects are living longer and healthier lives. So, to discuss on the topic, we have with us today Dr. Naim Raja, pediatrician from Health City Hospital. So, not to waste any more time, I'll straight away move to him and talk more on the topic which we have taken today. All right, thank you so much, Doctor, for joining to Good Life, the health show. So, today, the topic which we have taken is uh, indeed an important topic for the parents out there, for the newly parents out there. So, if we want to know about what is congenital heart defects, so what will be your answer on this, Doctor? Yeah, hi, hi Pooja. Thank you for inviting me uh, to this platform where I can talk to the parents who have babies uh, who are born with heart defects. So, coming to what is congenital heart defects, uh, I can just say that uh, in layman's term, uh, is that it's the defect which is present in the heart when the baby is in the womb of the mother. So, essentially, when the baby is born, the heart is not normal. So the baby is born with congenital heart defects will not have a normal heart. Okay. So these heart defects occur when the process of development inside the womb is there and the heart does not form the way it should. So those defects are known as congenital heart defects. That is the defects where the babies are born with heart problems. All right, doctor. Yeah. Now, you mentioned that a congenital heart defects uh, are present when the baby is in the womb. Now, if we talk about uh, the... If a person is, uh, yeah. if a lady is pregnant, now there are a lot of tests, a lot of ultrasounds is being conducted. So when those ultrasounds are being conducted, yeah. do they not uh, detect those heart defects in the baby at that point in time? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a very good question. Uh, right now, if you see the whole world scenario, every other outside western countries the heart defects are like 90 to 95 percent of cases are detected in utero that is when the babies are in the womb of the mother hmm. and that way we can plan the treatment better but in our country it's still developing many of the centers in india has uh, cardiologists or uh, specialists who can detect babies inside i mean the defects of the babies inside the womb where we can know that is basically an in utero diagnosis. We can diagnose before the baby is born. Hmm. So in our part of the country, like in Assam also, there are people who are doing those kind of echocardiography or you can say an ultrasound where we can detect defects in the heart when the baby is still not born so that we can plan it better in, in a way we can be more prepared to treat the baby when the baby is born. Yes, and, and, and that's So it is possible. So usually those ultrasounds are done at Right. Yeah, that that yeah. is that is the moment so and that is the point when doctors are. Sixteen to twenty weeks of pregnancy. Yes, yes. That is the moment when the doctors ask the parents that they can take a call uh, when those ultrasounds are being performed on the pregnant lady. Yes. If uh, any defects are there, then they can be cured. Yes. Or uh, what could be the pros and cons would be mentioned by the yeah. doctors to the uh, parents as well, isn't it, doctor? Yes. So basically, if we if we can detect that uh, heart defect in that period of time, mm. so if we know the intensity of the defect, like there are various forms of heart defects. If it's a simple one, we can counsel the parents that it's absolutely fine. Just give birth to the baby in a center where you will have access to a cardiac surgeon or a pediatric cardiac surgeon or a cardiologist. Mm. So that is the way we go ahead with the parents counseling. If the heart defect is a very complex one, where we see that the life or the longevity or the quality of life wouldn't be better in, in our part of the country, then we'll definitely counsel them and we'll give them an option whether okay. they want to continue the pregnancy or not. So right. in that way, uh, the parents can take the decision whether they should uh, abort or they should go ahead with the pregnancy. Okay. Yeah. Now, that was on a congenital heart disease. We had an idea about it and what call a parents can take when the uh, lady is pregnant and the ultrasound is being performed and if any kind yeah. of defects are uh, found, then how to proceed with it. Now, doctor, if we talk about yeah. what is its incidence, what is the congenital heart defects incidence? So, what do you have to say on that? Yeah. Yeah. So, Bob... Uh, to be uh, to be very frank, like it's it's not very not very very common, 
but okay. uh, it's not very rare. Mm. So if I go in the number, it's like one in hundred babies in India they are born with heart defect. Mm. It can range from a simple to a complex defect, but the number is basically one in hundred. So hundred babies, there will be one baby who will have a heart defect. So on an average, if you calculate, like every year there will be like or almost like two point five lakh babies who are born with heart defects. All right. Every year. All right. In now, India. okay. If we want to know about the basic causes yeah. of these defects, doctor, or what are those basic causes? Uh, I want to be very honest with you. There is no specific cause. Okay. We are yet to identify a specific cause which leads to a heart defect. But hmm. there are certain factors, like some diseases, some heart defects can be due to certain other factors, like infections during pregnancy, some of the drugs. Which the mother takes during the pregnancy. Hmm. If the mother takes alcohol during pregnancy, smokes during pregnancy, that can predispose to a certain form of heart defects in the babies. Yes. So uh, you are saying, doctor, as a whole, hmm. we usually call it a chance occurrence. Okay, sir. The doctor, so you are saying that uh, it is also related to the lifestyle which the pregnant lady or the mother is leading when she is pregnant. Uh, it's a very small fraction that I that that okay. I want to stress. Okay. It's uh, as I have told, it's a chance occurrence. We hmm. never know which baby is going to have the heart defect. Okay. But lifestyle in the form of like taking alcohol and smoking should be absolutely avoided during pregnancy because this that can predispose to certain kind of heart defects, which is a small fraction. Yes. Okay. Now, if we need to identify these defects, doctor, when a baby is born, so several tests are being conducted and of yeah. course there might be some symptoms which the baby will yeah. show and then the, these tests are conducted on the baby. Yes. So, what are those and how to identify these defects, doctor? Yes. Uh, so, any baby who is born with a heart defect will have a particular set of symptoms. Okay. Uh, it's, it's a very generalized way which I am telling you mm. because there are various symptoms which might occur and which might not in some babies who are born. Like there is a spectrum of diseases and the symptoms will vary from baby to baby. But generally speaking, there are very commonly, there, I can I can enumerate like five of the symptoms which are very easy to identify, even the parents can identify. Mm. So number one is, everyone knows blue color of the baby like in layman's term we call it blue baby syndrome so where it's we in medically we call it a cyanosis which is a very very common symptom in cases of heart defects hmm. or in children so where the baby's color like the eyes the hands or the nail beds and the tongue it might appear to be blue okay it occurs because of uh, uh, of the defect hmm. due to which there is less oxygen in the body hmm. and due to which this bluishness occurs so it is one of the very very common symptoms and it's very easy to identify uh, so which should be taken into account uh, number two we can uh, say that frequent chest infections like the baby the parents usually come with a complaint of frequent chest infections hmm. so because of this heart defect the heart and lungs are very closely associated so okay. because of this heart defect some of the heart defects there is very much increased flow towards the lung hmm. due to which the lungs become wet and it's more prone to infections so pneumonia recurrent uh, cough cold running nose all those things are very much frequent in babies who are having heart defects third is failure to uh, gain weight the way it should a baby should there's a proper curve the weight gain curve of a baby so that will be definitely affected when the baby is having some kind of heart defects hmm. so one of the common which we call medically as failure to thrive or the baby does not gain weight the way it should uh, four is that uh, the baby might have some kind of increased sweating so when the baby suppose a newborn baby hmm. uh, is feeding the breastfeeding so during breastfeeding he should at least he or she should at least the baby should take 10 minutes of continuous sucking hmm. but that baby if has heart if he has heart defect then he hmm. won't be able to keep on sucking for 10 minutes so he will have a uh, suck of around one minute then he will okay. get tired and then he will again so basically not properly feeding so that is another symptom uh, and many of the diseases are asymptomatic so they just what they do is they just present to the pediatrician with generalized symptoms and they get diagnosed when the pediatrician puts a stethoscope on the chest hmm. and he hears a sound which we call as murmur medically so basically he diagnoses it incidentally and then refers to us like uh, surgeons like us pediatric cardiac surgeons like us so these are the usual things like blue color hmm. failure to gain weight 
uh, frequently having chest infections like pneumonia, repeated okay. admissions in the hospital due to which the baby, I mean, because of the infection, hmm. the baby has to get it admitted to the hospitals. Then uh, incidental diagnosis due to other symptoms, he went, goes to the doctor and the doctor diagnoses him to have some kind of heart problem and then refers to us. So these are the things which the parents should be careful of. All right, so these are the things the parents should be careful of and these are the things which uh, can give you the identification of some kind of defect in your child and you should immediately uh, go and see a pediatrician to rule out the problem, isn't it, doctor? So, now, doctor, the things you have mentioned, uh, are you talking about the, uh, which is, uh, which is the I age audible? group? I'm not audible. All right, uh, doctor, if you can hear me. Sorry. Uh, all right, we'll have more conversation on this, but right now we'll have to take a break. All right, viewers, we'll slip into a short break. With a, do some, uh, we have uh, some more conversation with Dr. Naim Raja there from the Health City Hospital. Stay tuned. Welcome back, viewers. You're still watching Good Life, the health show with me, Pooja, and we are having a fruitful discussion with Dr. Nayam Raja, pediatrician from Health City Hospital. So, doctor, coming back to you again. Uh, earlier to the break, we were talking about uh, the identification of the defects. Now, what could be the symptoms that um, the parents will have a notion that they should immediately go and see a pediatrician to rule out the problem? Now, doctor, at what age... Yes. Uh, which is the age group we are talking about the child? Like at what age when the parents will come to know that there is some problem yeah. with the children? Uh, which is the age group we are talking about? Yeah. So the answer is not straightforward. Okay. Uh, because there is no particular age group for hmm. having symptoms. Uh, as I told you, congenital heart defects or the babies who are born with heart defects have a varied spectrum. Okay. So it can range from a very simple defect to a very large defect. Like it can range from simplicity to complex things. So and the presentations will also vary. Like a simple hole which we call as atrial septal defect. That might not present at all. Like it can be incidentally diagnosed when the baby goes to, I mean the kid goes to school or even like an adult, like 13 year old, 14 year old baby can have no symptoms and it get incidentally diagnosed by a pediatrician okay. that he might have some kind of heart defects. Uh, some defects which are more complex can present even at one day like I told you the symptoms like bluishness mm -hmm. or failure to gain weight this usually these kind of symptoms can even occur within the neonatal period like uh, the baby before it he, he or she becomes one month of age like it can range from one day to one month mm -hmm. or even after that so there's not a definite age period where the baby can be symptomatic it can range from even to just after birth to even up to adolescent or adult life. All right. Now, doctor, do we have the treatment and treatment modalities uh, for this uh, effect? So what do you have to say on this? Yes. So uh, the thing is that the best part is that we, at this present scenario, with the development of our branch, the cardiac surgery, uh, we can actually give treatment to almost the majority of the babies were born with heart defects and uh, with excellent results like the baby after surgery or treatment can have almost like a normal life so the treatment modalities to be very specific is uh, entire i mean essentially grossly it's almost surgical okay. so we have to do some kind of surgery but nowadays certain defects can also be treated interventionally like you don't have to do an open heart or you don't have to do a surgery you can go through a hole in the groin and through a wire you can fix that defect like a device closure which we call as a uh, so those kind of defects hmm. simple defects can be managed by the cardiologists too so but entire grossly speaking it's usually like 85 to 95 percent of the cases needs some kind of surgery which has to be dealt like uh, dealt by the surgeons, the pediatric cardiac surgeons. Okay. Now, doctor, any surgery which you have conducted and you would like to share that story with us, uh, which gave you immense pleasure and it was successful and the parents yeah. had a delightful moment at that point in time? Yeah. 
Yeah. So before going to, uh, to share my experience, I'm just going to say why I came into the field of pediatric and congenital heart surgery. Mm. So I have been, uh, I, I was trained as a cardiothoracic surgeon, uh, but since the last five years I have been into pediatrics. Uh, basically, I deal with and operate with on babies who are born with heart defects, right, from newborns to even adult baby, adult kids. So the thing is that. Uh, if you if you see a blue baby who comes to you preoperatively in your OPD, and then we know that he has certain kind of heart problem which can be fixed surgically, okay. and then we take the baby to the surgical room, we operate on the baby, we do an open heart surgery, and when the surgery is finished, when the drapes and everything is removed, the baby turns pink. He looks like an absolutely healthy normal baby. Okay. So that kind of immense pleasure, like that, is an experience which I need to share hmm. because that 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 gives you immense pleasure and gives us encourage encourage us to go ahead with this kind of program absolutely uh, recently today only we have operated like two cases i just came out of the surgery uh, so we operated a kid okay. who was a bit older just as, as i told you like she was asymptomatic and was incidentally mm. diagnosed so there was a hole in the heart and i just operated and closed the hole the, the kid is doing fine and will be soon out of the ventilator okay, okay. And there was another baby five year old who was having a pda which we call a small defects that also we like it and the baby is going to uh, be out of the ventilator very soon so, yeah, these are very nice experiences to Absolutely, do. absolutely. This is actually a very nice experience when you know that uh, the uh, surgery is successful yeah. and when you see uh, the uh, uh, happiness on uh, the parent's face. Uh, right. So that gives you immense pleasure and, of course, an experience that right. leads you to some other surgeries absolutely. as well. Now, Doctor, if we talk about uh, the uh, life expenses of uh, the child with these defects now, now, if we talk about uh, the life Threat yeah. or the surgeries are all surgeries successful or there is a slight chance of surgeries not to be successful so what do you have to say on that uh, to say on that is that it's, it also depends on what type of defect so the good news is that majority of these defects are completely curable completely fixable and they have the kids after surgery can have a lead a normal adult life they can lead like a normal baby who is not born with a heart defect. So they can have absolutely normal life. The quality of life will be like fantastic. So that is the best part. Okay. But unfortunately, there are still certain defects like some part of the one part of the heart is not formed. So those are like very a serious subset of heart defects, the congenital heart defects. So the thing is that if we have such kind of defects, then mm. there are surgeries which can improve the quality of life, but definitely cannot, cannot, cannot grant the baby or the kid a normal life he or she has to have a regular follow-up and he can have sort of a normal life but definitely not a normal life okay. so the life expectancy in majority of the kid will be like normal mm. just like a normal baby mm. but there is a small subset like 5 to 15 percent of cases might have some kind of restrictions because okay. uh, many of the surgeries are one-time surgeries in heart defects but some of the diseases needs multiple stage surgeries so you have to keep on operating like one at birth or one at one month of age, then at three year, three months, then at so there four are different years of sessions age. Which we have so to all conduct. these kind of stage surgeries. Okay. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So basically what I want to stress is that the okay. majority will have a normal life. Okay. And those who does not has to have a regular follow up. And nowadays we have different medications which can make their life almost like normal. Uh, all right. Quite good quality of life. So yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a good news. Okay. Now, doctor, there must be some restrictions yeah. after the surgery as well. Now, what are those restrictions or what advice do you give to the parents of the child? Yeah. Yeah. So, that depends on the surgery. Certain forms of, that's why I told you, like the simple forms of, simpler forms of uh, congenital heart surgeries, there are no restrictions at all. Like after the surgery, there are various myths uh, which I want to clear. I, I want to use this platform to clear all those myths that the parents uh, who have babies born with heart defects and that they have undergone surgery, like diet. Hmm. There is no restriction in diet. Okay. Yes, there is a small percentage of patients who hmm. we might have to restrict some amount of fluids like water, juice. So that, but that the doctor will definitely uh, during discharge will advise like what amount of fluid they can take and mm -hmm. how much maximum they can take water or juice. Hmm. So those amount of restrictions, but there is, uh, grossly speaking, there is no restriction in kind of food. Okay. Many of the parents also think that they do not bathe their children. 
they do not give baths to their children they think that the mm. baby has heart defects so they should not bath because that might lead to again infections and that might cause problems okay. but that is again a myth if you do not bath the children with heart defects mm. they will definitely have some kind of skin infections which can go inside the heart and can cause serious problems in okay. the heart so those are certain myths uh, mm. which the, i want to clarify to the parents like you should mm. be absolutely behave the behave like a normal parent and let the child be like a normal child So course, even after surgery if there is any kind of restriction we will definitely tell them yes yes doctor of course after the uh, surgery is being done of course you give the advices to the parents and that has to be followed strictly for that children as well who have already gone through the surgery now doctor when we talk yes. about heart surgeries when we talk about surgeries the first thing which comes to the mind is the cost of treatment now on that note uh, the cost of treatment what do you have yes. to say on this doctor uh everyone thinks that heart surgery is uh, uh is an adult part but there is a big subset of patients who are pediatrics who also needs heart surgery unfortunately the cost is still high for majority of the popula- majority of the people in our part of the country it it might be more for them but the big good news is that the government have various schemes under which we can operate them completely free of cost which we are doing here yeah. so we are almost nearing 100 patients in health city hospital where we have operated kids who are born with heart defects and that has been absolutely free of cost and that is basically a program by the run by the government which uh, we are dealing with but even if some people might not be eligible for those kind of schemes so okay. it's not too much it's just like an adult surgery adult heart surgery which can range from around 2 lakhs to 4 5 lakhs mm. so it's almost like in similar terms like the pediatric patients also will some kind of surgeries might cost like 1.5 lakhs to even like uh, 4 lakhs to 5 lakhs okay so the thing that the best part is that the governments are having various schemes under which we are operating patients with heart defects all right all right doctor thank you so much for those all those messages we are really short of time so we have to wrap up this show at this point in time thank you so much for those uh, wonderful messages and i'm hope the viewers who have watched our yes, show must you. be benefited with uh, all these uh, queries and the possible way which uh, the doctor have mentioned and in our next episode we will be discussing on some other important health issues so till then stay healthy stay fit and keep watching northeast live goodbye